Hey, it's Raymond Drake from GarlandDrake.com. We're here with Mary. We're going to go over a consultation with her and see what we can do about hair extensions. Okay, so on our questions here, the reason for your service, why do you want hair extensions? I want hair extensions because I miss having long hair and mm. I like the way it looks. You like the way it looks, okay, so it's more for fashion. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you currently have extensions? Or? No, I don't. No? Have you ever wore extensions yes, before? I have. And what method did you wear? Um, I had clip ins. Clip ins? Yeah. So client maintained. That means the client takes it in and out themselves. Uh, scalp condition, what we want to do is evaluate the scalp and what I do there is to see how loose or how tight it is. So actually she has a little bit of fluctuation in there. Mine's a very loose scalp so my scalp moves a lot. You can actually cut off the circulation on my scalp and uh, that's not a good thing. So any abrasions, scars or anything else on there? Mm -hmm. If, if I do an evaluation when I'm going through and I comb, if I find anything, I want to mark it on here. And then that way she can initial it and we know that it wasn't there that, prior to the hair extensions. Because I want to follow up on that, make sure we're not doing any damage. Uh, the whole idea of doing hair extensions is to add hair, not take away. So if it's not going to work for her, I'm not going to keep her as a client. What I want to do is do an evaluation of how long her hair is now and mark that. So I'm going to measure right here on the side from wherever my highest application would be. Because if I'm doing a, a connection right here and say I was using 12 inch hair, it would come to right here. If my connection is here, my track, then of course it would be lower. So we can use different applications. You're talking mid-back, so we're probably coming down to elbow. From the top, I have a 16-inch here. The lower 16-inch gets right down to the elbow. So are you looking for a solid line, or do you kind of like a layer? Layers. Layer. Okay. So if we use a 16-inch, it's going to create the layer all already. This is all the stuff normally I'm doing inside my head, not talking about it out loud. But for your benefit, I'm talking about it out loud. All right, so our desired side length is going to be 16. Um, you can see back here in the mirror in the back, we've got pretty much the same cut all the way through. She's got a little bit of a layer here. And the top layer is even shorter. So I'm going to have to cut into the extensions. All this I'm keeping into mind. Plus where her natural part is back there, I don't know if the camera catches it, comes pretty low back here. So I want to make sure any application is going to be out of the way of this. So we've got layers starting from 6 inches all the way down to 12 inches. 12 being the max length of her own hair. Okay, now we get into influences and what type of application I would do because how you live your life. Some of these get a little personal, but not too bad. So external influences, are you out in the wind a lot? Do you like to go in the ocean? Um, yeah, I do. Okay, swimming? Yeah, I like sun, to swim. Out in the sun, sunbathing? Yeah, I go to the so beach a lot. Okay, with human hair extensions, it'll fade just like your hair. Mm -hmm. does in the sun, even in tanning beds. So if you go in a tanning bed, you want to wrap it up in a towel. Same thing when you're ever out at the beach or use a UV spray, something to keep it from that. Um, how often are you in the ocean or a pool? Um, well, not that often. Okay. Well, probably like once every two weeks. Okay, all right. So she's not a daily swimmer or anything. So with human hair extensions, you have to watch it absorbs the water. Plus, if we were to do a braid and so, um, that would be one thing to keep in the mind about the moisture that's being absorbed into your hair. Okay, so we've got wind, sun. Do you ride a motorcycle? No, I don't. Okay, because if she was to wear a helmet, I also have to be aware of what happened, what technique I'm using if it's going to press onto your scalp. You want it to be comfortable. Internal uh, influences. Uh, how's your health? 
Um, it's good. Okay. okay. And then, um, what's that? I'm healthy. You're healthy? Okay, <laughs> yeah. do you work out a lot? Um, yeah, actually. Okay, and perspire and, mm -hmm. you know, work it out. The reason why I ask that is if we were to use a latex bond, latex bond releases with oil. So it's nice for somebody that's not that active, but if you're active in your sebaceous glands, oil glands, release, then it's going to cause the extensions to come out. So I've gotten rid of one method out of the seven that I could do. Um, medications. Do you have anything? What I'm really concerned with there is more like blood thinners, antidepressants. Oh, I don't yeah. Know uh, these types of things, the blood thinners, you can uh, create a hematoma if there's too much tension on the skin. Um, the antidepressants dry out the medulla of the hair shaft. So it's just nice to have a record of it. And that way, if something does happen, we can backtrack and see what might be causing if we have any breakage or not, because we don't want breakage. If hair extensions are done correctly, there should be no issues. Um, sensitive are you, when they do um, uh, the color, does it itch on your scalp at all? Um, well, when I do bleach, but bleach. I... Bleach, okay. Yeah. All right, so like a 40 volume or yeah. so. How about, um, are you allergic to anything? Um, not that I know of. No, and uh, it, adhesives, like if you put a Band-Aid on, does not any inflammation or anything mm -hmm. around there? Again, that would be asking more towards the latex bond, but we're not gonna do that application, so. Okay, at home, this is what I wanna know. How often do you shampoo your hair? Um, probably every other day. Every other day, okay. And then uh, your products, where do you, do you get it from a beauty salon, a supply, or a regular store? Um, my, well, the salon I go to, so the beauty salon. Okay. And do you condition? Yes, I do. All right. What I'm asking there is if she's willing to purchase new products or if she likes what it is that she has. Of course, I'm going to prescribe what I think that she ought to use because with extensions, it doesn't get any nutrients from the scalp. So we're going to have to put that back in, and conditioning is really important. Okay, styling aids at home. Uh, do you use a curling iron? Yes, I do. Flat iron? Yes. A blow dryer? Yes. Hairspray? Yes. Gel and mousse? Um, no. No. Oh. Okay. On these, I want to make sure that it has lower alcohol. Also, if she's using a flat iron or a curling iron, if I do individuals or strand bonding, then she has to, I have to teach her how to stay away from the scalp. So that way, to use the tool without remelting those. Uh, chemical surfaces is only color. Okay, when you do go to a salon, how often do you go? Um, I've been going like every three weeks to four weeks. Okay, and then when you go there, um, do you get a, a shampoo and finish? Yes, I do. Haircut? Yes. Conditioning? Yes. Perm? No. Uh, color? Yes. Hair additions? No. Okay. Some of these questions are repetitive. Um, normally the client's not here knowing this, but I'm kind of trying to find out if they're telling me the same thing over and over. Also, how often that she goes to a salon, it's a good candidate that she shows up and likes to go to a salon on a regular basis. With hair extensions, you have to have them maintain anywhere from four to eight weeks. She goes often enough regularly to do her own hair, so she's a good candidate for hair extensions. I'm gonna bring out some different hair and some different lengths and get an idea of what we've got to work with now. So we'll be right back.